Hey everybody, <clears throat> I am back with another lunchtime vlog and today I am coming to you to talk about something that I am working on. I am so excited to be able to bring this content to you. Um, this is something that I'm very passionate about because of the journey that I have been on myself and it is basically a series that will take you from the very beginning of a process of healing. And this is important because sometimes we struggle with um, not just healing, but accepting the fact that we have something that we need to be healed from or something that we need to address. And until we actually process that and we're open to accepting the fact that we have something to work on, it, it will continue to be a struggle. And so the name of the series is called Let the Healing Take Hold. And the reason I named it that is because, again, sometimes, you know, for one reason or another, we don't want to accept that there, there's work to be done. And, you know, we as a people struggle with um, accepting the fact that we have childhood traumas, that we have relationship traumas, that we have, um, we suffer from, um, abandonment. We suffer from neglect. Uh, we deal with so many different emotions and we deal with so many different things that it keep us bound and it keeps us tied. And, Unless you have someone who is willing to help you do the work, um, willing to help you identify certain things, then, you know, some people can get to a point where they can self-heal. Not everybody is in that position sometimes, and there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes um, we as an individual, we need help. So if you're a person who's dealing with addiction, you might, um, you know, you might need to be part of a recovery group. You might need to have uh, pretty much lifelong counseling, um, a supportive uh, circle. Uh, if you're a person that's dealing with some type of eating disorder, it might be the same thing. You might have to uh, pull people in and pull professional help in. If you're a person who is, um, maybe you suffered from molestation or something that um, was traumatic for you in your childhood, you, some people deal with things and they just kind of block them out all their life. Um, and then, you know, unexpectedly, these things just kind of pop up and you're now you're struggling with how to even identify what the heck is going on. Um, you may have blocked something out there. There's so many different things that could be happening with you. And you may be aware of some and you may not be aware of some. And the whole thought process around let the healing take hold is that once you are in a position where you have identified um, an area where you need to do the work, you have to be open-minded to those things that are crucial for you to be able to heal. And until you're open-minded to be able to receive those things, then the healing can't happen. But even once you begin to be open-minded, you're starting to receive um, whatever it is that you need in order for the healing process to begin, the healing actually has to take hold of you. You have to, there are situations where people have uh, been exposed to some type of trauma and they're going through the healing process. They're going through the counseling process. They're going through the process of trying to be better and get better and feel better and live better. But they're still in the back of their mind thinking that they don't deserve to heal. And sometimes they are aware and sometimes it's subconscious. Sometimes you just, it's like you don't even realize you're, you're doing and behaving and thinking the way that you are. So even after you get to a point of you're, you're, you know, you're open and you're receptive, you may still have this second thought that you don't deserve it. And so it's not sticking. What does that mean? It means that, you know, one day you might be fine and you're, you're on the path to, you know, not necessarily letting go. Cause sometimes people think that if you let go, that means that you have to forget that these things ever happened to you. 
And I don't believe that as a person who's dealt with childhood trauma and some other issues in my life, I believe that um, not necessarily letting go, but uh, it turning it loose more than letting it go because as long as you got a hold of it or it has a hold of you then it's going to cripple you for the rest of your life but if you just turn it loose it's not that it didn't happen it did happen you're aware that it happened but now you're going through the process of it not controlling the rest of your life you're going through the process of not allowing it to dictate the kind of person that you are you're going through the process of not allowing it to say what you deserve and what you don't deserve. So to me, not necessarily letting go, but just turning it loose and not allowing it to have you either. So you deserve whatever it is that you want. And this, the, the concept of allowing the healing to take hold, let the healing take hold, let it take hold of every part of who you are, your mind, your body, um, your heart, um, your mental state of mind. Not when I say your mind, it's not just your thoughts, it's your mental well being as well. So it's not just how you're thinking, it's how you're behaving because of how you're thinking. Um, physical. Sometimes people go through traumas and because of the trauma and not being able to heal from it, and not being able to put yourself in a place where you no longer have a hold of it and it doesn't have a hold of you. You're now sick. You're dealing with all these physical illnesses and things like that. But once you begin to start healing, you'll notice that your body will naturally start healing itself as well. You have heartache, so you can't be in fruitful and productive relationships because you don't trust anybody, whether it's uh, intimate relationship or just a friendship or just a general uh, working relationship. You don't trust anybody to not hurt you. And so you always have this, you know, one foot in, one foot out. You always have, you know, a chip on your shoulder. You always have this, you know, hold on, let me check you out first because this attitude, because you feel like you've been hurt so badly in the past that you just don't feel that there is anybody that you come in contact with that has any good intention. And so again, let the healing take hold. There are so many reasons why this is important because you don't want to live your existence where you can't be happy. You cannot truly be happy until you are in a place where you are free where you are free. And part of being free is knowing who you are. And that is the first um, part. That's the part one of letting the healing take hold. You have to first be able to, to undeniably claim that you know who you are. Because I'm going to tell you, it's a powerful weapon against anything that could potentially hurt you just knowing who you are. And I'm going to get into the part one uh, you know, there's going to be a part one video and the, let the healing take hold. It has the, the base concept is discussing the who, what, when, where the who, what, when, where, why, and how. And so each, uh, of those is going to have its own dedicated video. And we're going to talk in detail about, um, just different theories, uh, in life uh, my personal experience. I hope to have uh, a guest or two. I'm, I'm doing the research now to see who I want to pull in. Um, and just really talking about how to get to the stage of being totally free from those things that were designed to take you out. Being free from those things that never meant you any good. Being free from those things that just they were ill intended from the very beginning and it doesn't matter matter whether it is um you know the the situation included someone who you knew someone who you didn't know it doesn't matter whether it was physical trauma it doesn't matter whether it was emotional mental trauma it doesn't matter what type it is it could be something as simple as feeling like you were wronged um, out of a job, whether you were um, mistreated um, in a position 
you know, at work or whether it was maybe not understanding someone's intention. And instead of having a, a, just a, a very basic conversation so that they can hear your side of how you interpreted what happened. Sometimes we, and that is not trauma, but it is a situation that can put us in a mindset that people are no good. Sometimes it's really just a matter of having a simple conversation that helps clear the air and it gives each person an opportunity to say what really happened from their perspective. Sometimes it's just a matter of being heard. And so let the healing begin because you can be in a situation where you can misinterpret something and now you're hurt by it, but it, you're hurt by it because you don't understand what happened. You never asked the question. You never opened the door. You never uh, gave opportunity for there to be dialogue. And so that's me. Um, basically one of those kind of people that feel like if there's something that's going on, you know, if, especially if there is a situation where somebody misinterpreted something that I said or that I did, I really like to be the kind of person that say, okay, well, maybe I don't understand what you're talking about. Okay. Well, then they say, well, you did X, Y, and Z. Okay. Well, I, um, that was my reaction or that was my behavior because this, that, and the other. And if they feel like I was behaving in a certain way that was unjustified, we can have a conversation about it. We may not even, we may even get to the point where we don't agree what the outcome is or whether, whether we even agree what my intention was. I can say my intention was this and they can say, well, I don't feel like it was that way or whatever. And everybody's entitled to their opinion, but at least I want to be the person to say, I tried to have a conversation about it and at least try to get some kind of clarity. You're not going to be able to fix everything all the time. You have to be willing to walk away from a situation and process the fact that everybody thinks thing, thinks about things differently and not everybody is receptive to what it is that you're saying. And maybe they don't truly believe what it is that you intended. And that's okay because to each his own, you can't fix what somebody else thinks about you. That is something they have to work on. If you know that you were not being malicious and you know that your intentions were not ill and you know, it could be because some people have a tendency sometimes to say, well, this is just who I am. That don't necessarily make it right, especially if it's the fact that you feel justified in, you know, speaking your mind. Because some people will say, well, um, I just keep it real. You know, well, sometimes keeping it real is is. Uh, and sometimes keeping it real is. Uh, their way of saying that they can say what they want to say because they're an adult and, you know, they don't really care what anybody thinks of it. And I hope the air condition is not bothering you because I had to turn it on because I, I feel myself beating up here. But just keep it, keeping it real is different to me. You're being honest, but you're also being tactful. There's a way to say everything. You understand what I'm saying? There's, there's a way to address everything and still be true to yourself and be honest. So a lot of people take that term, keeping it real, and they, they, they you know, mold it into whatever they want it to mean instead of what it really supposed to mean. So anyway, I just wanted to come and just kind of, this is like a, you know, just kind of a FYI, there's some new content that's coming. I told you all that um, I was going to be uh, kind of on the back end revamping the way that my channel addresses certain things. And so I no longer label myself as a, um, a health and wellness advocate. Uh, I am a lifestyle modification coach. And what that means to me is that I am on a, my own journey as it is. And with that experience, helping people to, um, understand how to make changes in their life and move forward, move past certain things that they might be struggling with, whether it's something small, uh, like, um, being in a crowded room full of strangers. You know, I know I used to have an issue with that where, um, I would be nervous about going to events and stuff because I'm like, I don't know these people. You know, I don't have nobody to talk to, you know, but my mother, on the other hand, she don't mind going to anything because she's one of those kind of people that she's never met a stranger. I don't care 
where it is, who, you know, what the situation is. She speaks and communicates with everybody like she's been knowing them forever. And so, um, that's, you know, it took me a while. I still get a little nervous sometimes, but I push through it because I believe that when you are in a situation where you want to help people, where you want to connect with people on a certain level, that you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations in order to meet new people and to experience new things. So that is going to do it for this particular video. And I just wanted to make sure that I put this out there, that you all keep your eyes peeled for let the healing take hold because I truly believe this has been very impactful for me to put it together. And I truly feel like it's going to be the same for you. And I want to say that, you know, if you have been subscribed to my channel, thank you so much for sticking around and hanging out and rocking with your girl. If you're new to the channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Um, I know that all of all the content that I have, you'll find something that you like. And I hope that you come back. Make sure that you smash that like button and share my video out. But most importantly, if you can go ahead and interact with me in the comments and let me know what you think about the concept of this series that's going to be coming forth now that I've given you some information about. Let the healing take hold. What do you think about this? Do you anticipate that it'll be very helpful? And um, let me know if you um, are looking forward to it. Even if you comment and just say, watching you on the replay, y'all know I've been saying that, slide through watching on the replay, just interact with me in the comments. But I do appreciate you coming and I hope to see you in the next video. If you're not already a member of the Fetch fam, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and download that app, scan my QR code and get to scanning those receipts. You might as well take advantage of it. You're already spending the money. The receipts translates into points. The points translates into cash. And you can redeem that cash via store card or cash card. Or you can donate to charity. Well, all right, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. But you know we don't do so without saying, love yourself, love somebody else. And until next time, y'all take care. Bye.